you embark on the practice. And as you stay with the practice, it's best to think of it as a voyage of discovery. After all, the Buddha says, the goal is to see what you've never seen before, to realize what you never realized before, to attain what you've never attained before. So you are going into the unknown. This means that we're going to have to deal with risk and uncertainty. Which requires a, an interesting mix of attitudes. On the one hand, you have to have a certain amount of confidence. So on the one hand, you need confidence, and on the other hand, you need humility. The confidence is confidence in your ability to deal with unknown factors as they arise. The humility means that you can't expect everything to fall into your preconceived notions. that the path is going to stretch your imagination. And ask more out of you than you might originally be prepared to give. So on the one hand, you need the confidence that yes, you can do this, and yes, this is a good place to go. And the humility to realize you don't know beforehand what it's going to be like. I know some people want to have all kinds of guarantees before they embark on this, and you can't really guarantee anything. And you can guarantee that when you get there, it's going to be good. But how much is that guarantee worth for someone who hasn't ex experienced that yet? Just one more thing to take into consideration. You think about the Buddha, when he embarked on his quest. He had no guarantee that he was going to survive, that he was going to find the deathless, that all that sacrifice was going to be worth it. But he reached the point in his life where he realized that if he didn't at least try it, he would feel that his life had been wasted. And so for him it was a huge experiment. There was a lot of risk and a lot of uncertainty. And yet he was willing to take the risk, to face the uncertainty. And so for us, it's not quite that drastic. We do have people who have gone before. Now again, there's the question, can we trust them? Can we believe them? But you look at the alternative. A life lived devoted to sensual pleasures, to trying to find happiness in things that are going to die that we're going to be separated from. And so at the very least you say, well, look, there's a possibility here, let's give it a try. So try to have that sense of adventure. And be open to new things. And learn how to deal with uncertainties. Today we're talking about the maps for the jhanas. And when you try to apply the map to your actual experience, it's going to be uncertain for a while. You read the description of directed thought and evaluation and rapture and all, and the question is, what do those terms correspond to in your actual experience? And you may have some ideas, but they may be wrong. Is that going to stop you from practicing? It shouldn't. It should simply alert you to the fact that you're going to be dealing in uncertainties for a while. When you place labels on your experiences, they have to be post-it notes, signposts to use in the meantime until you get a better sense of the terrain. I mean, the surest of the the signpost is the one for the fourth jhana, when you, the in out breath stops.
But that's all the way in the fourth. How are you going to know one, two, and three? Well, you, you guess for the time being. And you put a few notes here and a few notes there. And have the confidence that okay, when you find something more certain, you're going to be in a position where you can rearrange the notes if need be. And the sense of adventure also means that you may have some anticipations of what's going to work and what things should be like in the practice. But right anticipation is not part of the part of the path. Sometimes you can push things in the wrong direction. I mean, the Buddha's instructions are very precise, pretty simple. And part of us doesn't believe that anything that simple could really work. There must be some secret. There must be some way you can speed the process along. But sometimes in speeding along, you derail yourself. It's like sharpening a knife on a stone. If you're in too much of a hurry, you can ruin the blade. You sit there very carefully, rubbing it against the stone, rubbing against the stone, making sure that the pressure is even all the way down, and realizing you may be here for a while. And part of the mind says, well, I'd like to have it done fast so I go off and do something else. But there also has to be another part of the mind that says, well, if you try to speed it up, you could ruin it. And so even though the results don't appear as quickly as you like, maybe it's the slow results that are going to be the most lasting. So you have to put your preconceived notions aside. Don't try to skip over the steps. I mean, the Buddha does teach a sense of urgency, but he also teaches patience, and you have to learn how to balance the two. And be willing to learn new things. This evening I was reading a, a study guide to the, some of the suttas, which was raising questions about different passages that just didn't sound right or didn't seem to fit in in terms of the the author's preconceived notions. Well, there's always the question, well, maybe your notions are what's wrong and not the passages that seem wrong. There's a lot going on in the text that may be more than we realize what's happening. They were talking to people at a different time with a different range of experiences. Sometimes the Buddha was talking to people with extremely unusual meditative experiences. In other words, maybe he knew what he was talking about. Maybe the texts are accurately reporting him, even though they don't fit into our preconceived notions of what the text would be like if they were written for a modern American audience. So what you're asked as you approach this practice is to stretch your imagination a bit. It's not the case that the Buddha will be able to prove everything to you beforehand before you're willing to, to act that you can act with confidence that you already know where you're going to go and how you're going to get there. You have to be willing to live with uncertainty and to put question marks against a lot of your assumptions. Because after all, remind yourself, your assumptions are the assumptions of someone with defilement, the assumption of someone who's still suffering. And it might be in your best interest to at least put them aside for the time being. Instead of demanding that everything fit into your preconceived notions of how it should be. And you should be willing to embark on this without 100% guarantee that everything is going to work out. You have to have a clear sense of the precariousness of your own position where you are right now. Where do you get your sustenance? Where does the mind gain its pleasures? Are those things solid and secure? When you go into the uncertainty of the path, are you leaving, a, leaving an area of true certainty and surety 
and being asked to go off into figments of someone's imagination? Or are you being asked to leave the world of uncertainty where you already are? And to test some different uncertainties, uncertainties which actually promise something more than the uncertainties where you are staying right now. This is why one of the basic principles in the practice is practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. In other words, not in accordance with your preconceived notions, not in accordance with your ideas of what you want before you're going to commit yourself to the practice. In other words, instead of reshaping the Dharma to fit your notions, maybe you should have to reshape yourself to fit the Dharma. There's going to be a period of discomfort. There's going to be sometimes a sense of frustration when things are not quite working out the way you wanted them to. And you need the maturity to learn how to deal with that. This is not a path for immature people. It's a path for people who know that they're in a very precarious position already. That their ideas and their, their assumptions are precarious. But the ideas and presumptions of a materialistic worldview, which is what we're brought up in, have a very limited range or offer a very limited range of happiness, whereas the Dharma offers a lot more. And it's up to, us, up to us to decide whether we're willing to make the sacrifices and take the risk to see if what the Buddha had to say is true. <laughs>